The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily represent those of Access Fort Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting group. Access Fort Wayne is a department of the Allen County Public Library. If you or anyone you know might be interested in making a television show, please call 260-421-1250. Hi, Dr. Rudy Cashman. Welcome to the Mind, Body, Spirit show. But I tell you, this show will indeed be about the mind, the body, and our spirit. It will be about our addictions, multiple things that we can become addicted to. And it, it and it's very common, of course, as we already know. What does it all include? Cigarettes, actually are the most uh, addictive drug. One cigarette, and you could be hooked. Yeah, S some people are. Alcohol can be pretty much the same way. Um, narcotics, technology, yes. Gambling, some people get addicted to gambling. Yes, even sex. Uh, marijuana is a big one coming along. And there are, there are uh, many more. Uh, you can be addicted to exercise, but actually that can be good, but it can also uh, get out of hand and even affect your health. So let's talk a little bit about the science. Uh, uh, brain up there, that three pound uh, piece of fat, actually is extremely complex. Uh, it has 100 billion brain cells in there. A hundred trillion or more neurotransmitters. Those are little molecules that jump from the exon to the dendrite and send the message. Yes, it, that is determined really what's going on in there. And we have specialized areas of the brain that have to do with uh, uh, appetite uh, 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 and uh, uh, with uh, gambling, uh, addiction uh, with a cigarette addiction. So it's very complex uh, and different parts of the brain are involved uh, with this and we'll review that, okay? Uh, but uh, why uh, do we want to drink some alcohol or, or, or smoke a cigarette or take a narcotic to feel a little better? Uh, it is generally fear that leads to addiction or stress. I can't sleep worrying about the future, worrying about the, uh, the past. Uh, and uh, so it's a disruption of our normal functioning. And, uh, and we have powerful brain pathways. For example, we have in our, near the frontal area of the brain, the nucleus accumbens, accumbens. You know how big it is? In, uh, I mean, the area of a millimeter or so is very small, but it puts out dopamine, uh, which makes us feel uh, good very quickly. It could be singing a song. It, it could be telling a joke. It can be alcohol. It can be cigarette. It can be a, a narcotic. A cigarette would be seven seconds uh, for your brain uh, realizes you've had a smoke and I feel good. The trouble is, is that body starts metabolizing uh, the chemicals and the nicotine uh, in, the, in the liver, and uh, uh, within a half hour, 50% of the effect is gone, and after an hour, uh, the whole effect is gone, and boom, we get a light up again. And that's what you have to do the rest of your life, unless you stop. Yes, you know, from in ecstasy, to depression, you feel low, you don't feel good, 
and you get a light up again. That's your life. So smoking a cigarette, you can indeed uh, see the problem. Uh, people were smoking or chewing tobacco years and years ago. It can go back a thousand years. The Mayan Indians, for example, were uh, chewing it, uh, and, and they get a, and they, it was very high dose, and they would have hallucinations. So they would uh, uh, then use it in religious ceremonies uh, largely. Now, we didn't learn how to make cigarettes to make it easier and quicker till about 1850 or so. Then they started using machines and uh, could make 150 cigarettes uh, in, a, in, in, I mean, in about a minute. You know, I mean, then it, it starts spreading, uh, of course. Uh, Columbus took some of the tobacco leaves uh, back uh, uh, to Europe and, and the French uh, ambassador a while later. Uh, Nicot was his name, N-I-C-O-T, that's where the word nicotine eventually uh, came from. Uh, and, and they would uh, chew it and snuff it and then cigars and then chewing tobacco and then uh, eventually the cigarette uh, was uh, 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 developed. They did notice around 1910 that they could only addict about 10, 15% of the people. And you know what they figured out? Just listen to this. Most of you w uh, would not know that. They added sugar to cigarettes that made the smoke acidic, which opened up the lung alveoli and allowed nicotine and its chemicals to get into the bloodstream quicker, seven seconds to the brain, I'm having a wonderful day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, there's a teaspoon of sugar in about every cigarette. Mm -hmm. And then they came out and said, well, we will invent the filter, it'd be less addictive and less cancerous, or because the cigarettes, the nicotine carries with it hundreds, maybe a thousand chemicals, yes, that enter your body, yes, and they can about do anything to you, cause vast disease, cause, cause uh, uh, cancer. Uh, some uh, even uh, are chemicals that are used for explosives, very small amount, of course. Mm -hmm. And cigarettes, you know, get very hard. They, they, they're hot, uh, and they are a big cause of house fires, for, ex for example. Mm -hmm. So when you put a cigarette out, it's, uh, be, be careful because the many, every day a house burns down but someone has severe burns from a, a cigarette that caught fire in, in their uh, houses. And this thing, too, is the uh, nicotine and the chemicals can affect a child much more than an adult because children's brain is not, are not fully developed till age 25 or so. So when they start smoking, at, for example, at a very young age, it can destroy some brain cells. Mm -hmm. They've shown through what I call PET scans uh, that parts of the brain are missing improving on MRIs and uh, PET scans that it can be destructive to different parts of the brain. They have proven that. That has indeed been proven. Uh, and, and that's permanent. And that's a, a permanent condition. So it is very important to uh, uh, speak to children about smoking. It is much more so if they're smoking marijuana. A lot more brain damage uh, uh, occurs there by smoking marijuana. And there the changes are much more dramatic than, say, uh, for uh, nicotine. So to uh, sit down the children uh, and have a talk with them about addictions to alcohol, to cigarettes, to, uh, to marijuana, 
true technology is important. Uh, and, and, and why, you know, uh, uh, are they uh, doing it? Uh, because addiction, because on the way to addiction, uh, they're taking it uh, because of some core beliefs of the addictive. If you overuse it and it causes harm, then you're on the path to addiction. Okay, and, uh, uh, and a lot of it is related to, to fear. I'm alone in a cruel, harsh, and unforgiving world. I'm separate from everybody else. That's a lot of times why we use these substances. I want safety and peace of mind. I must judge others and be quick to defend myself. I'm just going down the line of the addictive thought system a little bit, not all the way. Attack and defense are my only safety. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I feel so much better when I'm using these uh, substances, but I'm traveling way down here, way down here, uh, when they wear off uh, and uh, I, I can't sleep, I'm, I'm stressed out, I am fearful, uh, and I need to take that, whatever it is, that substance again. Uh, guilt is inescapable because of the, the past is real. The past is real, can never be forgotten. I have to act it out. Uh, and th to speak to your children about this, I, I think is very important. You know, in one of the most addictive substances, sugar. Mm -hmm. I debated that once with somebody on this TV show right here. Uh, and I thought she, I took no cane, the part of the debate. I've never taken an illegal drug, uh, although I smoked, tried to learn to smoke in high school. And me and my roommate went to Concordia High School, Bronx, New York, a boarding school. We, we both went to the bathroom and lit up a cigarette. We could not stop coughing. Thank God for that, because smoke is alkaline makes you cough a lot. That's the reason they had to put sugar in the cigarettes to make it acidic so you don't cough as much and you're likely to continue to smoke and become addicted to it and you can uh, keep on buying it. Matter of fact, the companies depend on 20% of the people that have any of these bad habits. They're, they buy 90% of the product. And smoking is a, a very expensive Yes, maybe a couple thousand a year. Uh, I remember speaking about wellness to a factory and I was sitting next to a guy. And I would say 80% of the people in there smoked. You'd say, well, it's 20%, 18% smoke anymore. Well, certain economic groups, there's more stress, more fear, uh, much higher rates of smoking. He just quit. He says, I couldn't afford it anymore. I was saving $2,000 a year. Uh, and of course, uh, besides constantly having to light up again, uh, but there's also health issues involved. High rates of lung cancer, uh, the nicotine and the chemicals come with it. The four or 500 chemicals come with it. Uh, they affect uh, every cell in your body, uh, affect the uh, uh, liver. Uh, higher rates of breast cancer, for example, uh, renal cancer, uh, liver cancer, a lot of vascular disease. Some just grab their chest and, and, and they die. Uh, and it, it destroys the collagen in your skin and your joints. So most smokers, you won't believe this, I was giving this talk once to some college students and I was saying generally smokers look 20 years older than they are. It's true. Look at us. You have some smoke. Look at them. Their skin shrinks because the collagen has been destroyed. And I was giving this talk to some 15, 16 year old kids, and the little girl said, "Do I look that way already?" <laughs> she was 16. Of course, she didn't. But when she was 36, she probably looked like she's 60. But I mean, that's okay. But I, I'm just saying that's another reason uh, not to smoke. 
The marijuana thing, of course, concerns all of us. Uh, uh, they're thinking about 20% uh, of teenagers are smoking marijuana three or four days a week. That is the path to other drugs, usually. If they smoke marijuana, uh, they're more likely to use nar narcotics, alcohol. It's it sort of, and, and it, it lights up the nucleus of Cubans, a dopamine, oh, I'm feeling good. Uh, and then uh, eventually it'll, it'll light up the serotonin that's a little further in the brain stem. And, and uh, uh, it, with some drugs, they, they last longer and they may feel good for a few hours and then they crash and have to take something else. Marijuana also causes the munchies. It affects the appetite center of the hypothalamus of the brain uh, and, and you won't eat more. So, and, and that's one reason uh, uh, they call it pot because you got pot bellies. You see a teenager with a pot belly, maybe he's addicted to sugar, but maybe he's addicted uh, to um, uh, marijuana. Uh, and of course, once they have the pot belly, they're uh, overweight. They're going to get diabetes, which is 30, 40 diseases associated with it. You see, it's a path. It's a path to becoming sicker and sicker. But also, if you have a, a relative uh, uh, or friend, uh, uh, talk to them, because you may find out they're leading very stressful lives. And maybe you can help them and counsel them uh, to uh, other habits that it might be relaxing, uh, music, teach a kid music. And he may not, he may give up cigarettes in part because he's feeling good from music. Music is, teach a child music is a, a, a good thing. This was a, a big issue. Uh, marijuana is coming now. I mean, you can realize that they'll probably legalize it, legalize it throughout multiple states. Uh, they came out with CBD oil, which uh, is a cannabinoid uh, oil that's in the marijuana tree, okay? Uh, and they're selling it now all over the state. The legislature brought it to the people, uh, uh, and, and it affects the cannabinoid system. Remember, we talked about the dopamine system, serotonin system. We also have the cannabinoid system in our body. Generally, cannabinoid system, its function is to smooth things out, to reduce anxiety. Uh, and, and it makes people feel better, but it, it, it has very few positive effects on the brain. I mean, they claim it reduces seizures, but we have plenty of medications uh, for that. They claim it reduces pain, well, maybe a little bit, they rub it on, but it affects the whole cannabinoid system, the CB1, CB2 uh, receptors. Uh, and it's hard to trust the companies that sell it. So some of them might say, well, it's only 2% uh, 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 cannabinoid in there, when in reality it's 60%. You're much more likely to say, boy, I feel so much better. And you go buy more and more. So. Can you trust industry uh, in this? Uh, these are not, it's a plant, so it's not FDA approved. Uh, there are some now made that are FDA approved, but the majority are not. You don't know what's uh, in them. Uh, and uh, so, you know me, I wrote a book, okay. <laughs> uh, and I think it's happening, gonna happen soon. CBD oil, Indiana's road to marijuana. I don't want it to happen. That's why I wrote this book. You can get it on Amazon. You can read it in one day. But, it, but uh, the, uh, you might say, well, it, it's a harmless. It doesn't hurt anybody. But I really studied the science. And you know what I found out? That you know, any drug you take or any plant you take eventually has to be metabolized. The liver's got to. Uh, metabolize it, then you get rid of it. It could be in the urine, it could be in the stool, uh, it could be in your breath. Uh, and I found out that the uh, 
CBD oil turns, and marijuana, of course, turns up the P450 enzyme. Uh, and this enzyme does most of the metabolism, metabolism breaks down most of the uh, drugs, chemicals that you're taking. So I told the story to a workout center where I uh, uh, go to lift some weights and run the track. And, and I was speaking to one of the trainers. And, and uh, she was not too appreciative of my conversation because she was selling the product uh, to the people she was training. It, it was perfect innocence. She did not know. And this lady, elderly lady, was on five different medications, and one of those was a blood thinner. And, and she came to me and, and said, okay, I didn't believe you, so I checked her blood. Her blood thinner, it never clotted. Fortunately, this lady did not fall down. She she died. But in an accident, uh, or something which occur, occurs all the time, uh, you don't hear much about the stories, probably because they don't test the people in an accident um, to see if they had, um, except occasionally, whether they met marijuana in their blood or CBD, or product of marijuana in their blood or CBD. Or if they did, you'd see some huge uh, lawsuits. And they will eventually, you know, they will uh, uh, surface. Uh, so even if you're using these oils for pain here and there, if you're on mo multiple medications, th they will, this P450 enzyme will not do its work. And, and, and it may be not as strong as you like it or, or too strong. You, c you can't predict. So the drugs you're taking will be affected by marijuana or CBD oil. It's kind of interesting uh, uh, story. So the, uh, when you get 20% of the kids uh, using uh, uh, the medication, uh, they're much more likely, you might say, well, it, it's not as addictive or as destructive as uh, nicotine. Well, and these dual products that they're selling uh, which incidentally, they added sugar. No one speaks about it. There's sugar in them, okay? <laughs> so you're more likely to want more. And uh, remember I said, uh, you want to be healthy, sugar is the booger and the hooker. You want to get overweight, eat sugar. Uh, I, I give a lot of talks on that. Uh, sugar uh, is, is, is your enemy. If you have a weight problem or uh, sickness problem, uh, even if you have cancer, cancer is a sugar feeder. A cancer cell needs 13 times, 13 molecules of sugar to make one ATP, the energy molecule. Uh, Otto Warburg discovered that in the in 1930s, and it was got the Nobel Prize for medicine. But we kind of not stress that much anymore. But like uh, breast cancer, much more common in people who are overweight, and they overweight because they were sugar eaters, okay? Uh, because sugar raises the insulin level, and the insulin level will take the sugar you don't use up for energy and stuff it into your fat cells, so you get overweight. So if you take an insulin, you'll be overweight because that's insulin, insulin controls the fat cell. Kind of interesting uh, uh, sideline, and sugar lights up the dopamine uh, nucleus uh, and the serotonin, and you want to eat more, and you never, you never fall because it makes you feel so good. Not being critical, I'm just giving you, you know, the uh, uh, necessary um, information. Uh, the uh, so to deal with the children. Uh, and to help them to avoid addictions by teaching them things that affect these neurotransmitters that make them feel good. Playing a sport, playing a musical uh, 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 instrument uh, uh, repetitively, uh, daily, marching in a band, um, all these things will help avoid addictions. Uh, and, uh, and alcohol, uh, is another one that can sneak up on you pretty quick. You know, as a neurosurgeon, I treat a lot of people with blood clots in the brain uh, because the brain had shrunken 
from alcohol consumption. Yeah. I had people whose brain was that far, that far off the skull. Yeah, that far off the skull. Commonly. The whole brain shifted over because it was no longer there. But the people weren't functioning that badly mm -hmm. uh, yet. Okay. Uh, I remember seeing a lady came to see me one day, 80 years old or so. As a neurosurgeon, she sits down on the bench over there. And beautiful red dress on. I recommend as you get a day older, like, you know, I'm 39 for the 45th time. <laughs> okay, she's a signia, beautiful hair, lipstick on, high, high heeled shoes, 80, 85 years old or so. So I look at her chart. And, and, and she had consumed a lot of alcohol, and the brain came down, and she did a little blood clots on both sides, and I made a hole here, a hole there. And, and then, because the brain does not regenerate, comes up a little bit, but, you know, the spinal fluid there, and the saline I put in there, and the brain slowly comes back up. She had tons of care six weeks. And, uh, and, she, and I came to, in to see her every day. Well, as you might tell today, I like different kind of clothes. <laughs> and I asked her why she was dressed up like that, a beautiful dress, black high heel shoes, w red wig on, it was the whole thing. So it's not the cash. For six weeks, you came in in my room. I couldn't talk because my brain wasn't functioning well. But I could see, and I looked at your clothes the whole time, and you think I was going to come see you today and not dress up? <laughs> we got to have a laugh now and then. But alcohol is destructive uh, to the brain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Many accidents occur because people have been uh, uh, drinking. It, it uh, interferes with memory, it, it, uh, with cognition. Uh, it may reduce your anxiety for a little while, but then it gets metabolized. It's a sugar. It gets metabolized, so you may come home, you fall asleep, and then as it gets metabolized, you wake up again. Yeah. So. Your brain is kind of like that. So uh, unless you're almost unconscious, you'll wake up in a few hours, and now you can't sleep at all. So it's not a good uh, uh, sedative. And, and a little bit of alcohol can, after a while, lead to more and more and more. Well, they'll say one or two of the drinks of wine a week is OK. But I tell you, you know what the latest science showed? No alcohol is healthy. None. Uh, and uh, I myself rarely have a glass of wine, maybe. R rarely. You know, you do lose a few brain cells as you get a day older, normally, okay? You do have neuroplasticity, and you'll grow a few more if you're doing things. You're active, you're exercising, you're reading, you're doing puzzles, and a lot of things going on in your life. Uh, you actually grow more brain cells than that you destroy as you get older. So old age is not the living end, but if you're drinking a lot of alcohol and you're older, you're going to shrink your brain more and memory loss, maybe even dementia. Drinking too much alcohol, alcoholism can, can indeed lead to dementia, bad health, and an um, uh, uh, early death. And, and if you do it regularly, it can addict you, can be destructive. Yeah, you start becoming aggressive start having seizures and headaches and, and uh, accident with driving. I mean, it's, it can be uh, quite quickly. Uh, some people get addicted to gambling, yeah, and because of the reward. Remember, when I become addictive to the things we speak about, you get a reward and you feel good. And so it is with gambling. You go to Las Vegas and put a lot of money at stake. Uh, uh, and you and they give you a periodic reward. In the end, odds are they're going to win, with a few exceptions. Uh, and and this intermittent intermittent reward uh, a actually causes more addiction. If they give you some every time, addiction rate is less. But if you give intermittent reward, it's like your little dog who's eating off your table. You give him something all the time, he'll get bored. But you give it intermittently, he'll keep right on barking. How do I know so much about it? 
That's my dog. <laughs> I made the mistake of feeding him off the table. My wife said, you will create a terrorist. And she's right. He's, he's about 15 years old now. And indeed, uh, when I'm eating dinner tonight, he'll be there barking if I don't give him something. And uh, so don't feed them off the table. Fortunately, my two cats, uh, brothers, they eat little pellets. They're not addicted. They eat the same food every day, small amounts, they did not become addictive. So they're neurotransmitters. When you take a substance again and again, the receptors on your cells die out and you need to take more. That's called tolerance, tolerance. Now you need to take more and more so uh, that you can have effect in your body called tolerance. So you go through certain steps. If the thing you're taking causes harm, that's really the main uh, definition uh, of uh, addiction. Uh, and, uh, and you can indeed do it uh, with, with sugar, alcohol, uh, cigarettes. Let me read to you a, uh, I put together a little poetry, a spoken word on addiction. Uh, I've done about five of these. I got one on walking uh, in nature, on, on diabetes, uh, just to kind of make it a little more uh, interesting, which reminds me, if you watch the inauguration, I think it was, and a uh, beautiful young black girl came up, and she did a spoken word. You may never read it as such, but it was poetry that she was uh, uh, speaking about. And I went to Trine University one year where a person came in from Chicago, a girl, and did spoken word. And she asked if anybody else had written any of these or heard of it. And I was there with the faculty, and they said, yeah, Dr. Cashman brought her to Trine. And I had these with me, and I had five of them. And I asked, and she asked me if I would stand up and, and do one. <laughs> I had it in my pocket, and uh, I did. And the audience picked addiction, so I like to read it to you a little bit. It's an easy way to remember uh, uh, things. And uh, usually, if people are smoking, there and and people are, are less. You see less of it now in the public. They don't allow it uh, in restaurants in Fort Wayne, for example. My friend, Dr. Crawford, councilman, he's the one with maybe a little prodding for me too. Uh, pass a smoking ordinance, and we don't smoke in restaurants and public in Fort Wayne anymore, first in the state of Indiana. So we say thank you, Dr. Crawford. So, but uh, people who smoke tend to stick together. Peer groups, family and friends, they all smoke together. A fast high, I'm in heaven. Anxiety, fear, fear and stress, Relief temporarily. Remember, the nicotine level goes down. We get to light up again. Life's a mess. We need a quick fix. Seven seconds, it's to the brain. To relieve pain, pain of stress. A break at work with nicotine. I was a wellness director at a factory where they allowed the people to smoke, not in the factory, but outside the factory. I had no control of that. and and. I think I'd say they should not be allowed to smoke on the business campus. Okay, once they leave the business campus, they're free. Okay, that's just my opinion. Okay? And so a break at work with nicotine. People do it commonly. One cigarette, a life of addiction and affliction. You can be, nicotine can be that quickly addicted. I smoke, you smoke, we all smoke. It is no joke. The, the, uh, Every few minutes, you get to light up another one. I remember seeing patients in the hospital where they used to allow them to smoke on the staircase. Yes, they did that 20 years ago, maybe. Uh, and a patient would go to the staircase about every few minutes. And I said, nurse, what's he doing? They're lighting up a cigarette, OK? So joy is the answer. Joy is the answer. And that's for all addiction. We need joy in our life. So teach the children joy or the mate or whatever. 
of uh, uh, smoking. And uh, addiction, nicotine is more addictive than heroin and quicker. Wow. One cigarette can cause a lifetime of pain. Fast addiction. Pain in the brain and pocketbook. Remember I told you? A couple thousand a year at least. And illnesses and doctor visits on top of that. Okay? Every 24 hours, 365 days a year, the road to hell for a spell. I feel great. And then, boom, I go down. Roller coaster ride, up and down the ride, can't hide, chains, shackles, handcuffs. We're locked in. We're in hell, a burning fire in our body. It's inflaming all the blood vessels in our body. Can develop a stroke, sudden heart attack, renal disease, kidney disease. And uh, chains, shackles, handcuffs. We're in hell, a burning fire, a lifetime of nicotine and it's 500 chemicals. I think it's more than that. I read today it was 1,000. But another time I read somewhere is 4,000. But it's full of chemicals. You don't know what they're putting in there, OK? Just like sugar, the booger, and the hooker. Sugar, they got by 50 different names. So you got to know the different names. Otherwise, you eat processed food. Uh, uh, you will, uh, if you don't read the labels. If it's processed, you don't want to eat it. Eat it fresh. Eat low sugar, moderate protein, good, 50% good fats. Learn what good fats are. Look at my diabetes show, I'll tell you what good fats are, and you'll be very healthy, okay? So there's a monkey on my back, a devil in my soul. Who's to blame but us? Lifetime of addiction and affliction, help me, help me, help me. Health consequences. Our body is on fire, 300,000 miles of vasculature is slowly burning, smokers face. I'm 40, but I look like I'm 60, the mosaic of addiction. You can tell by looking at you, okay? Chemical smoking effect, every one of the 70 trillion body cells, it affects every one of the cells. It's the chemicals with the nicotine, thousands that are killing us that are in the cigarette, okay? Remember, and sugar too, okay? And this one really will get you. Our pets will breathe it in, and, and they'll get t cancer of the tongue and jaw, heart attacks, lungs, any organ in the body. My house burned down one time, and I lived with somebody, and they had a parrot. You know what happened after a while? He developed a lump life here, and he died. Beautiful parrot. Mm -hmm. What do you think? He breathed it in, OK? Both dogs died while I was there. What do you think? I didn't smoke, but I did leave it in for a while. They smoked in the house. I lived only nine months, fortunately, okay? It also causes hearing loss because of small blood vessels. Hearing loss is one of the first things that occurs with cigarettes. Black lungs, stiff lungs, emphysema. I can't take a breath. I can't breathe. A horrible way to go called emphysema. It occurs from uh, smoking. Now we have a cane. I'm lame in a wheelchair. I was blind, but now I see. Text vision, too, because there are small vessels, blood vessels involved. I can sing. The music stopped dying from frying. Lighting up to smoke is no joke. Avoid it, avoid it, avoid it. If you need a copy of the spoken word for you so you can read it to the kids, <laughs> let me know. And, uh, and a social problem. I remember visiting uh, some relatives of mine in Boston, outside Boston. And, and I originally lived in Germany as a child, so they were a very nice couple uh, back in my relative's house, and they wanted me to speak to them. You know, in German, I went in the house, and you, as you walk in, you could smell it. Uh, that's one thing, too. If you smoke, you can smell it in your clothes. The whole house smelled like that, just two beautiful people. And then I got a phone call two years later, men and wife, they were gorgeous, good looking, intelligent people who had come from Germany, both died. And nobody would buy the house to give the money to the kids because it was full of smoke. What a sad story. And uh, uh, so, I stink. People try to avoid my house, which smells like a dead mouse. 
My friends are smokers. Secondary smoke is no joke. It can kill family, children, relatives, neighbors, pets. Employers don't want you. They smell that. Want to go out, one date? No, you're a smoker. I'm not dating you. And that's, you know, it's common. And babies that are born in a smoker's house can be born addicted and they have to be withdrawn from the nicotine. It's true. But again, when we speak about the smoke, it applies to other drugs too, the alcohol and the narcotics, which can even be more destructive, okay? Can't sell the house or anything I own, it stinks. Clothing, furniture, pets, the carpet, the walls, everything smells like smoke. We go outside to smoke no matter what the weather. Who wants to ride with me? If you're a smoker in the car, do you think anybody wants to ride with you? That's a smoker, so avoid smoking, avoid smoking. We really spoke about the cost. Good costs cover a thousand a year and more. Your health insurance costs go up. They say, are you a smoker? The insurance rates go up. Mates want to escape. Relatives don't want to visit. I'm not going to visit cousins. So they're always smoking. So just quit. You have a life of denial and delusion. I was blind, but now I see. Smoke free for thee, monkey of my back. I have my life back. My health can come back. My family and pets are alive. I respect my body and my God. He wants you to be healthy. So shuffle along, shuffle along. I've been taking the road to hell. How could I even realize? For all I know, how good it feels. I thought I found a friend, a cigarette, habit that I adopt, dependency I cannot stop. Little did I know I've been on the road to addiction. No mercy, no conviction. We'll be done here in a minute, okay? And uh, uh, what do you do to relax? Walking out in nature is a good way, just exercising a little bit. Remember, you spoke about music. What about singing? And uh, I take a walk every morning, and, and I'm singing. Remember, I'm not a smoker. I, fortunately, I coughed, so I didn't myself. I never did pick up the habit. And uh, what a wonderful world. It might as well be spring. The falling leaves pass by my face. Open your eyes. Look at nature, OK? Raindrops are falling on my head. I have a smile on my face. Snowflakes pass by my window. I enter the forest for relaxation, meditation, to get rid of stress, a much better way uh, to deal uh, with it and do away with the daily mess. I hear a whispering breeze. It's a tease that makes me at ease. A red-winged blackbird greets me and tweets and tweets, and I was whistling back. He comes closer, and he wants to land on my head. True love. So love is important. Love your pets. Love your family. Love your children. Uh, love your mate. L love reduces anxiety. And uh, a red cardinal with a fancy hat sings to me clearly. He wants to chat. I sing back, but he's not impressed. This really actually happened to me. So, I see trees are green and red roses too. They're blooming for me and for you. Springtime is going to come. It's not just snow here. So, the leaves of the cotton tree are waving, dancing, prancing, and the wind and cotton has flowed by. What a beautiful sky. It looks like snow, but it's only spring. So, I tiptoe, slowly advance, walk not to destroy anything in nature. I wish I could fly like a butterfly that's circling my body, a canopy of blues and paints and whites and browns, like a mosaic of color fluttering along. What a splendor, once even on my hat. Well, what am I saying? It, it even goes a little bit longer than this. If you need a copy, let me know. A good way to teach, I think, a child, uh, frankly, uh, uh, about uh, uh, smoking without boring the deaf, and they might even be dancing and singing <laughs> uh, uh, to this. Uh, so the, uh, you can see that there's a big circuitry uh, up there uh, in your brain. But you know, technology 
can can do this too. And and uh, I I remember seeing uh, a family walked in on me one time many years ago, and the man needed a surgery on his neck for a ruptured disc, but. All two kids, the husband and wife, they were using the iPhone, just pounding away, all four, all four, talking to me, never looked up, never looked up. And, uh, and that's a bit unusual. I mean, there might be a kid doing it, and at least the patient's talking to me. He didn't even look up. He interrupted this, and I operated on him, and I remembered them, and when they came back, after surgery, nice result, no arm pain, and they're still all four. So what are they doing? They must be living in another world. I don't know enough about the family to know what they're es escaping. Uh, who knows? Maybe it's abuse, maybe it's a serious illness. I got no idea, but they were definitely caught in the trance. And I saw it many times. Well, I sit at Starbucks where I wrote a lot of my books, we were drinking coffee, so I was escaping too. But it was something reasonable, you know, have a coffee, not the sugary drink they were selling, mm -mm. just plain coffee, which can be addictive, but not that much. Uh, no one says coffee is addictive, okay? If it does affect your neurotransmitter, it makes me feel good in the morning. I drink no more than two cups, never drink afternoon. If you drink after two, three, four, five, then you have trouble sleeping. <laughs> I know that for sure. <laughs> so uh, uh, it's okay to have a cup of. We all need something to, to feel a little better. Uh, and in the mornings, you wake up with something called circadian rhythm. Your adrenal gland puts out a little bit of steroid, uh, uh, which uh, stimulates a little production of. Uh, uh, sugar, the blood pressure gets raised a little bit, and you feel better, and your appetite actually gets turned off. So when they say, well, you got to eat a big breakfast, not really. Through the circadian rhythm established in, in nature and, and in our body, uh, if we can, sometimes you just got to eat because you can't eat any other time. To delay breakfast or even skip breakfast, a very healthy thing actually, uh, to, to do, that way you can reduce your eating time to maybe eight hours a day, a day, maybe only two meals a day, 16 hours, you're not eating. But what's happening then? Your blood sugar goes down, your serum insulin goes down, because the insulin's down, your fat cells uh, open up, fat comes out, goes to the blood system, hooks to albumin, goes to the liver, it gets converted to ketones, and ketones actually make you more alert, smarter, and they uh, are stimulating your brain instead of sugar. You're in ketone metabolism, a very healthy thing, very healthy thing uh, to do, actually. But you need to listen maybe to one of my other YouTube shows or TV shows that I do or to learn a little bit more about it. Remember, we just spoke about sugar addiction. If you want to not want to eat sugar all the time, and it's, it's in our nature. Nature designed us for us to seek some sugar to stay alive. We need a certain amount of it, but, but there's, there's only a teaspoonful and a half of sugar in your blood system. Yeah, sugar is not that much in, in your body. What's a lot of in your body? Even in a thin person, fat. Yes, you get about 2,000 grams of glycogen in your liver and muscles, 2,000, okay? That can be used up in one day or in a marathon, okay? Say that like myself, I probably have 40,000 calories in my body of protein, no, fat, fat. Yes, in between the muscles, even a thin person, it can be used for energy. Uh, and, and better energy than sugar because your blood sugar level will be like that if you're in fat metabolism versus like this with insulin and sugar uh, 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 fighting each other. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. And uh, I think very, very interesting. 
So to keep uh, us and the children uh, from becoming addictive, it's important to really watch them closely. Uh, and and, and a, a, a drug addict, a child, can, can develop in your family without your knowledge. You, you may not be using any of these things, and they've picked it up from somebody in the school. Who are the kids hanging around in, uh, for example? And occasionally, you got to maybe look through the room and see whether you're finding any beer cans or beer bottles or, or cigarette butts or marijuana butts in there. You, as a parent, you have to be very alert because once they're hooked, it is extremely difficult to undo it. It can be done through withdrawal counseling, but some have to even be locked up put away for a while. It's very, very uh, uh, difficult. Uh, Joseph Califano, uh, who, who had been a, also a big government official, uh, wrote a book called How to Raise a, a Drug-Free Kid. And uh, a great book to read. I'll hold it up for you here. Okay, great book to read. Very sincere very sincere person. And he wrote in there, and I'll, I'll read you a few to him, uh, parent tips for you as a parent. Early on, okay, establish an open dialogue on a variety of topics with your children. Mm -hmm. And to make it pleasant uh, for them, try to, not as a punishment, out of love, out of uh, love. Make your expectations about substance use clear to your children. Mm -hmm. I remember in my house, you know, and fortunately I, I didn't become addicted to anything, but I remember my stress as a neurosurgeon, I had definitely some alcohol in the house, but I never became addictive. I'd only ever drink here and there, but there was enough. It was sort of a culture, you know, I had it locked up in the closet in the basement, but um, my teenage, four teenage kids they get into the closet, which I didn't know. They had to, and, and were drinking more than they should have, so you get to be alert. So yourself as a parent, maybe not drink at all or not be an obvious drinker and don't store a bunch of stuff in the, in the home because they'll get into it. Just like, uh, not to get on this subject, but just like if you have a bunch of guns in the house, the most likely person to get injured or killed from your gun, one of your kids, statistically proven, statistically proven, almost every day, almost every day a child dies uh, from a gun that they found incidentally, they inspected and, and accidentally were killed. It's no different with alcohol, cigarettes, narcotics. If you're taking a lot of medicines, you get them in the cabinet, some kid is going to get into them. Okay. The, uh, when discussing alcohol and other drugs, be honest and focus on the facts appropriate to your child's developmental stage, depending on their age. Okay. Uh, tell your child that we know a lot more today about the dangers of smoking, drinking, and drug use for teens than we did years ago. Okay. Use news events, TV shows, stories in the paper. Okay. If your child asks about the history of uh, substance abuse, don't lie. But again, yourself, you have to look at yourself. Are you smoking yourself? Are you drinking so much yourself? Are the, his friends smoking and drinking, and is he living in a world to escape the world on his uh, uh, computer, on his iPad? Uh, uh, s some families take the iPad away at certain hours a day. That's very common today, and so they become realistic and pay attention to the people living in the in the home and and detox them from the iPad or the. TV set uh, and, uh, and set a good example and 
they teach them hobbies, they give joy, uh, that maybe you participate uh, uh, with them, throw the ball with them, play tennis with them. And uh, I know I played a tremendous amount of tennis even when I was working. And part of that, I think probably I used it as an escape. I maybe used it almost too much, went to the club all the time to play tennis at night after work. And I may be even better off if I had been at home uh, looking after the kids. Who knows? We all have things to learn, but to have a realistic, you know, uh, look at things, okay? Um, teach your child that being a good friend means getting help for a friend who abuses substances. So if they uh, know somebody, a friend of theirs that using, uh, misusing a substance and, and they're not, uh, maybe to be a friend and to teach them that, and maybe point it out to the, to the family that they better uh, get to work. So uh, Califano's book was a great one. Another one I really like uh, for the marijuana thing, which, which will come soon, is Going to Pot by William uh, Bennett. He was a surgeon general in the United States. And, uh, and uh, a great book to read about uh, he feels marijuana is extremely harmful. And we know it's coming to our state. And maybe letters to editors, speaking to your family, speaking to your children, because it's on the road to other addictions. That's the trouble. It's on, it, it's, uh, on the road. Lastly, maybe look on this cover of this book. This is more than you'd want to read. Uh, but I'll just show it to you. It's a history of uh, nicotine. The Golden Holocaust. It's a Holocaust. Origins of the Cigarette Catastrophe and the Case for Abolition. Well, we, that's not going to happen. They're making too much money on, on uh, taxes. But uh, if we use the, like the state of Indiana is considering raising the tax on cigarettes, they should have done it a long time ago because it's the elasticity of demand. The more you raise the taxes, uh, the less people smoke. It's not one-to-one, -one, but, but it works, and we should have done it many years ago, our legislators. Uh, uh, you can imagine they allowed a lot of this addiction to occur because they're, they're, ma they're making money. And the lobbyists, some of these companies, who are, uh, and, and, and we still don't know if that's going to pass, but write your congressman, we want to pass that legislation. Less people will become disabled, less will die. So thanks for listening to my story on, on, on these multiple uh, addictions. I see people for free at the Three Rivers Pharmacy on Fridays, 373-1083. Uh, I get over their diabetes or their addictions, uh, and my heart is in it. Why am I doing all this? Because I love you, I care about you. And believe me, I know the subject. I probably have 1,500 <laughs> books in my basement maybe 30 or 40 in addiction when you just look at my table here and, and you should be glad I did not bring them all. And, uh, but uh, it is indeed an interesting subject which affects every family, uh, affected mine. I'm just trying to pass on uh, the knowledge. So I hope you keep on watching our shows uh, uh, and I'm mean especially uh, teaching about sugar addiction, uh, and I have a half hour on, on diabetes reversal on Mondays at 6.30 on, on public uh, access, uh, uh, and, and, and watch that because uh, we're all prone. Nature designed it so we would seek sugar, including me, okay? There better not be a donut laying on the table when I come home tonight. It's not allowed <laughs> because even I couldn't resist it, okay? But that leads to bad health and, and diabetes as associated. I always said 40 diseases. I read in a book the other day again, maybe 150. Yeah. So we ate right, all those diseases would go away. Then I find out the virus loves sugar. So the viruses that are killing people, they're, they're, they're killing the diabetics. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, again, watch my other shows. I love you. I care about you. Uh, and uh, if any questions, get to me, call me, hug me, see me at the pharmacy. Bye-bye. <laughs>